Welcome to Branding the Experience, where we discuss ways how we can create environments where employees actually want to come to work and customers want to keep coming back. Hi, I'm Ken Bader, your host for Branding the Experience, and I'm excited to start this new season with a super fun guest. He is a former comedian, he is a comedy club owner, and he is the host of the business of comedy. His name is Tom Sims. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Ken. <laughs> Great to have you. You know, we don't talk enough about the customer experience in a comedy club. <laughs> now, I got I got to think that that's got to be one of the most difficult customer experiences to provide in that not only do you have to have all the other things correct, like the food and the drinks and the service and the atmosphere, but you got to have funny people too. <laughs> tell us yeah, about that's an the, important part for sure. Tell us about tell us about the customer experience that you continue to strive to survive at your comedy club. Well, the interesting thing about a comedy club specifically um, is, as opposed to a restaurant or bar, you know, um, you know, first of all, they're kind of showing up to have a good time. Right. Mm -hmm. They're they're kind of usually they're already in a good mood and their expectation is, hey, we're here to have fun. So that's that's a great starting point from a business perspective. Yeah. Um, and the other thing and I, 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 I you know, I've, I've we've I've talked about this with my staff is, you know, if they're if they're really enjoying themselves laughing and having a great time, um, you know, if their burgers a little late getting out or 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 maybe it's a little undercooked or something, they're they're not as, uh, you know, upset about it as they would be in a, in a restaurant, because when you go to a restaurant, the food is now yeah. that's the thing. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. um, so they're a lot more forgiving when they're busy laughing, you know, um, so it's a, it's a little easier from that perspective. Uh, but, yeah, if they're not laughing, it, that definitely makes everything worse. <laughs> <laughs> so so if so if the 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 comics are extremely funny you can get by with some standard burgers and watered down drinks i'm well, kidding i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> that's my attempt at comedy this is why i don't do comedy <laughs> but you know that's a good point because you know we talk about the the branded experience for a lot of service based businesses um, you know, we've talked about banking, which is my primary bank background, and most people are either apathetic or pissed off walking into right. a bank. Yeah. So you, you're already working from a negative. Usually for most of the time, I would say restaurants, you know, people are in a decent mood. They're looking forward to getting a decent meal, possibly with their friends and family. But they could be ticked off, you know, especially sure. if they're going to a bar, they could have had a bad day. But, yeah, I would say 95 percent of the time people go into a comedy club are already in that, you know, hey, I'm going to a show. I'm getting entertained. So, you know, you probably have to really lower the bar in terms of the experience to have like a bad customer experience. Is that a, is that a good I don't know. Is that a good analogy or am I way off base there? You know, I, I was, I, I never really thought about, you know, ex customer experience before opening the club. It's not my background. I wasn't in service, but now that I am, I mean, it, it, it really is something that I've really gotten into. Um, and I think, and I, I probably should have thought a little bit. No, I'm not sure I'll be able to articulate this correctly, but you you'll do fine. Yeah. You got you got your own podcast, man. You'll do fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think people people get a sense when when a business doesn't really care about their problem, yeah. and and I think you know all humans we all we want we just want to matter. We want to know that we matter. So I think. I think when a, when a person gets a sense from a business that they don't really care about you, they just want you to shut up. They know that. And that, that affects the entire experience. And, but the converse is true as well, is that when they do know that you, you care about their issue and you, you want to make, you want to make it right. Even if you maybe can't give them the outcome that they want, they're just appreciative that you tried. I, I matter, you know, and I think there's, there's a lot of little things and, and it's, I have a bit of a, a an OCD thing, I suppose, and 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 
<laughs> and the customer experience, I, I like I said, now I, I'm kind of obsessed with the customer experience. Yeah. So when I go into a business, I notice little things like that. And it drives me crazy because coming from this side of it, I think to myself, I know you don't have to do that that way. I yeah. know what you're doing here. You know what I mean? So I, I, I get even more mad about it. Um, but so I'm always thinking about those. Li it's the little things that that convey to people that, that we care you know, mm -hmm. about about your experience here. So we're always my staff and I, we're always talking about that, that stuff. You know, what can we do? Yeah. We want to make sure, you know, and the other thing is the bar seems to be so low now for people. They have no expectations mm. of customer service anymore. You know, when a customer emails me, the, the, they go to the website, they send an email, ultimately it comes to me and I respond. And they're just, they're shocked that they yeah. got, even got a response and they thank me. And then they'll come back to the club, you know, who, where is Tom? Who is Tom? You're like, thank you for responding. And it's like, that's the least I could have done is responded yeah. to you. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's not a good thing that the bar is so low, but I think, um, I think for, for a business that, that does care, I think, um, you know, people are more appreciative now than they would have been because no one else seems to, that seems to be the overall attitude. Yeah, you, you definitely care, you know, that came across, it's coming across now and it came across, um, for my audience that knows that I also write for podcast magazine, had an awesome conversation with Tom that turned into an article in uh, podcast magazine. And, it, and you talked about, you know, going to one of my main tenants and to apply it to the business of comedy, comedy clubs and running a club is as our tagline for the show says, it's about, you know, making employees want to come to work. And then that, you know, that provides a positive customer client experience. Mm -hmm. And I remember you talking about green room etiquette and, you know, making sure that the comedians are in the right space with each other, um, not space physical, but space sure. mentally before coming on and I, i'm sure that there's you know some conversations with employees waiters waitresses you know, cooking staff all those folks tell me a little bit about what goes on be behind the scenes for a comedy club and making sure that the entertainers and the uh weight professionals are in the right mindset before you even open well i i you know, you, you can have the greatest business in the world, but if your employees aren't happy, you, there's nothing you can do. So, um, you know, and again, it is a comedy club. So you're already kind of lucky in that sense is, well, you get, a, you know, there's, we're all laughing and having a good time. So but I, I tell my staff when they're when we bring them on board, I, I tell them, you know, look at it this way. We're we're. Five, five or six times a week, we're putting, we're, we're throwing a party for a hundred yeah. people and, 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 and we're, we're going to invite them to our party. That's the way I want us to feel like as much, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a job. They're going to have a lot of jobs, but while you're yeah. here, let's just look at it. Like we're having fun. We're going to have a party. You're going to have some, you know, you got your problem customers occasionally and stuff like that, but you know, let's just have a good time. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very, I want them to understand, you know, when I opened the club, I had my own thoughts on how to produce a comedy show and prepare the room and all of that stuff. And I, I take them through all of that. They're probably tired of hear, hearing about it, but <laughs> why we do things this way, why we do things that way. Um, the reason is, is gonna, it's going to make the show better. And I, I'm, I'm very, I don't just tell them, do what I say. I, here's why we do it. And if you have a better idea, I'm all ears. We'll do it. If I find a better way, I'll change immediately. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm real transparent and I want them to understand kind of what it is that we're doing. Um, you know, prior to this, I, I worked in many clubs over the years and, and um, I, I saw the challenges, the customer experience challenges and uh, some of the big ones that are specific to comedy clubs. And, you know, I wanted to, before I even thought about opening the club, but I was like, okay, how do we, how do I fix that problem? Yeah. Because I don't want to have that problem. Um, and there's a few of those that are kind of big that we've, I think we've fixed. Um, and again, I, I, when I bring somebody on board, I walk them through, we do it this way 
most comedy clubs do it that way, which is why we do it this way. Mm -hmm. um, and they get it and they go to other comedy clubs. And, you know, a lot of my staff are young. They haven't been to comedy clubs and then they'll come back. We went to this club and they do this. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I know. That's why we do it that way, which is kind of funny. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think with, with your staff, you just have to, you know, it all it all comes from the top. I'm kind of a, you know, I was a comedian. I'm a big, dumb guy. I try to have fun. I, I'm, I'm not I try to. I try to make it um, like a family as much as possible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So much of what you said is right on point, especially in terms of, yeah, I tell people on the show and clients all the time, repeat those standards, repeat your process. Um, don't do it in a condescending way, but do it because it's that important. And it's part of the brand that makes you, you unique. You know, service standards, the process, your system. And when you do that, it, it, it helps to ingrain it in people. You know, I truly believe, you know, if you were ever in sales, there was an old sales axiom that people needed to hear something seven times before they actually got it. I yeah. think in today's age with the internet and tweets and everything coming at you, I think it takes at least a baker's dozen, probably more for it to yeah. really sink in. So, you know, if you're getting bored with saying it, odds are the people that you're saying it to are just starting to get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But go, going back to one thing you said, you know, big problems and every business has problems. You know, if it didn't, then we'd probably all be in heaven and not working or something. Who knows? <laughs> but, but what are some of or one or two of the biggest problems that you see at your club or in comedy clubs in general? And are they different possibly from other businesses? Um, you know, they're probably probably similar to, to other businesses in, in this, you know, if you sell tickets, you know, um, one of the big ones for me was, uh, you know, a lot of comedy clubs and, and this is getting into the weeds of comedy. So sure. I don't know if this will be interesting to your audience or not, but well, heck with um, them. I'm interested. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest things is, you know, what's called the check drop where, um, you know, clubs will drop the checks for their customers, you know, with 15, mm -hmm. 20 minutes left in the show, which the show just basically comes to a halt for the last 15 or 20 minutes. Every comedian hates the check drop. Yeah. It's the worst ever. Um, but 99% of clubs do it. And I get it from a business perspective. It's you're saving payroll time and all of that, but mm -hmm. it, it just, it just ruins the show. So we don't do that. We, I, we figured we took our time to figure out a process of how we can avoid doing that. So we don't do that. And we're known for that because we're one of maybe five clubs in the country that don't. So that was a big one. Um, starting shows on time seems like every comedy club I, I had some friends that opened clubs and they'd start shows 45 minutes late i'm like these people have babysitters you i'd walk out <laughs> so so i'm pretty obsessive about that if it starts to get show time and we're running a little bit late everybody knows that you know we we got to get this going that was a big one and then um the idea of reservations and you know i, I i've been at clubs where people would show up with paid tickets but they got kind of got there a little late well, we sold your seats. Mm -hmm. What? So we don't do that. Um, if somebody buys a ticket, you know, we don't take reservations. You have to buy a ticket. But if you buy a ticket, your chairs will you sit empty see. if you don't show up. We're not going to do that. And that was one of them. And then um, the, the biggest one is um, it always, you know, I'm, I get annoyed. I go to a lot of comedy clubs. I love checking clubs out. And if I'm watching the show and I want another drink, I hate stopping what I'm doing to try to track down did, mm -hmm. did she see me you know that that stuff you, now i'm missing the show that i just spent 40 bucks on yeah um so we i had these table lights built to just you tap it it nice. changes color and it lets the servers know that you need something so those were the big ones that i wanted to that i noticed those were those are some problems that i need to fix before mm -hmm. i open a club so um we put a lot of thought into that and so yeah, I love all of that. And I think that the takeaway, you know, whether our audience is running a comedy club or a restaurant or a bank, you know, or a dentist office for that matter, um, service-based businesses, you, you, you have to create an experience because it's more important than the product. 
and whether it's comedy or dealing with the the waitress and so forth it's still the experience and i love what you're doing especially you know, i love the example of the check drop because i've been to probably not as many comedy clubs as you have tom but i've been to a number of them and as a consumer that always kind of aggravates me a little bit because yeah. you know they're coming they're dropping the check so um, my attention is now off of the comic who I paid for, who I probably am enjoying. Yeah, you know, if they're yeah. not that funny, I'm probably like, yeah, let's pay the check and get the <laughs> hell out of here. But you know, if I'm enjoying them, you're dropping a check, you're taking my attention away from them. You know, now I'm looking for a card. I feel like I'm being pushed out. You know, there's kind of a as a right. consumer, there's a feeling of. When this show ends, you know, your ass needs to roll out of here because we either have another show in a half an hour or right. we want to go home. And it's just yeah. not a good ending feeling. But what you've done that you can apply to any service based business is you've looked at the process. You've thought about, OK, how does this make the consumer feel? And you made changes based upon that. And I, I think that whatever you run if it's a service based business that's the big takeaway from what you just said yeah i i mean the attention is the the uh distraction is the is the death of comedy in in live comedy so all these little things they circle back to keeping the audience focused on what they came to see mm -hmm. so whether it's all of these things that I just mentioned, the table lights, the check drop, all of that, it's all about letting them, the audience, keep their attention where it's supposed to be. And you could extrapolate that out, you know, uh, the temperature. And, and you know, one of the big complaints is of comedy clubs on, if you read Yelp reviews, is they don't like being sat with strangers at a table, mm -hmm. which, you know. Uh, so we don't do that, you know. Yeah. that's All of our tables are two tops for that reason. Um, but, but again, it, this all goes back to just, just minimizing distractions as much as possible, yeah. you know? So if you, I think if you, whatever your business is, if you can reduce, reduce your mission to a, a, a core like that, like in my case, minimize distractions, yeah. then it, 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 then it starts to give you ideas. Well, what is one thing that distracts them? Well, this, when they do this, when we do this, it distracts them. Well, let's, let's think about that as a problem and then let's fix that. Yeah. So we, we know that sort of that, that idea that that concept that core mm -hmm. so that's how we think about everything else so i think whatever your business is if you figure that one that one thing out what is it really that we're trying to do here and then yeah. how do we how do we do that what can we do or not do yeah well i want you to talk to all the restaurants that i go to because yeah i i want a light to just push because it seems like when i want my water refilled you know as my dad yeah. would say he's like they pulled a houdini on me you know they, they even here you know <laughs> what's going on all i want yeah. is my water <laughs> yeah. so as yeah. we as we begin to, to wrap up here yeah one of my big takeaways from your expertise is creating a party. Yeah. And granted, you know, to all of my, you know, banking, financial, um, healthcare friends out there are watching that. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, the dentist office probably is the party. Uh, maybe the chiropractor's offices. I don't know. Um, you know, it's kind of a party at my chiropractor, but I make it that way because I joke. With them. But anyhow, I digress. Yeah. Yeah. How can we create a party type of atmosphere at an acceptable level in this society at a service based business. Yeah, it, it, granted, again, you know, comedy is kind of a party already, but how can how can we possibly create that party atmosphere for our employees at other service based businesses? Um, you know, I, I I have a lot of you know, I have a small business and it, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's just me and my staff. So it's I have a much easier time with change of policies and yeah. adapting quickly and all of that stuff. You know, if you're, a, you know, if you're Applebee's, you know, it's, it's hard to make a, <laughs> a change to that level. And, and the, and the decision makers are usually so far up, they don't even hear yeah. about a problem, which, you know, I, I still have that. I'm always reiterating my staff, 
if there's anything that's going to make things easier or better for the customer, you know, you got to let me know if it's, if it's, if it's a problem and I don't know about it, I can't, I can't fix it. Yeah. So, um, you know, a, a bigger company, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm really impressed when I go into a, a chain that has really good customer service. I'm like, man, how did you, how do you do this it, it, to the scale? It's really, you know, I'd really like to know. So it's easier when you're smaller. Um, <clears throat> but again, I think, you know, my, my employees, they, they see me messing with stuff. They see me on the hand, my hands and knees, fixing yeah. the table myself. That, so they know how, I think they sell, see how much it, it matters to me. So I think in turn, it matters to them. Hopefully, I mean, you know, some employees are good. Some are better than others. You know, you, you roll the dice. Um, but for the most part, I think just setting an, an example <clears throat> and, and the expectations, you know, um, and <clears throat> I, I tell my staff, my, <clears throat> my manager, you know, if you're ever in a situation with a customer and you don't know what to do and I'm not there, just err in the side of yeah. making them happy, um, mm -hmm. you know, but by the same token, and I don't know if I should say this on a podcast, but, you know, I, I don't believe that the customer is always right. No, I agree with that. No, um, there you can say it. I, I'll say it. The customer is not always right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And if, you know, if, if we truly do something where we mess up, if we overcook that burger or whatever it might be, I, I go way overboard because I do believe that it's cheaper to keep a customer than mm -hmm. to lose a customer. And I do feel bad. I, I stick to my stomach if we mess somebody's order up. But if they're, you know, and we go overboard to try to fix it. But if, you know, there's some people that it's not about this. It's about mm -hmm. you're going to listen to, you know, the problem customer. And I tell my staff, be nice, be professional, but don't do anything to encourage them to come back. Because if, if that's the way that they're going to be to you, we don't, we don't want them back. If they're going to yell at my staff or something like that, you know, unless it's our fault, for sure. Um, but we, we discourage the bad customers. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, you, the the customer, you're right. The customer isn't always right. And sometimes people just want to bitch. Yeah. Um, sometimes maybe they just had an unfortunate bad day and we could have a little bit of empathy. Um, other times they, they just literally have a problem and it's not with you. They have a problem with life. And, yeah. You, yeah. and I think that the branded experience concept also means that you know we're standing up for our staff and our people you know if you made a mistake that's fine well let's fix it and let's not make it again but you know we're also not going to let our staff people our team members our family as you put it get attacked unnecessarily right. and, and at a level that isn't commensurate with with the issue i completely agree with that and it out and i don't let big brands off the hook because I truly believe that there's a culture within a culture, you know, to use your Applebee's example is, you know, yes, there are standards and things that come down from corporate things that they can't change at Applebee's. But much like your great example uh, of, you know, hey, I'm, I'm cleaning tables, I'm picking stuff off the floor. You know, that manager at Applebee's is setting a tone at that location. You know, case yes. in point, you know, I worked at Citibank. In the late 80s, you know, I know I only look like I'm 22, but, you know, I was I was working my way through college in the late 80s at Citibank at a branch in the Chicagoland area. And that manager, you know, it wasn't in his job description. You know, when the toilet was overflowing, he went and fixed it. You know, he played yeah. janitor. You know, when when the, the we, it was a cold day and there was ice on the stairs, he went and grabbed the salt. And tossed it on there. He could have. He could have asked any of us. You know, like this part-time schlep. Hey, Ken. You know, go grab the rock salt and put it out there. Hey, grab a plunger. You know, but he did, yeah. and that set the tone for the Absolutely. team, even though it was a big corporation. And to your other point, you know, err on the side of helping the customer. You know, I remember a specific story which I've told on the show, which I won't repeat. Me and a teller supervisor screwed up totally went against policy it wasn't our intent in order to take care of a customer and we found about out about it the next day that manager said don't ever do this again but i really really appreciate what you did because i know why you did it yeah which was to help the customer 
Yeah, absolutely. When, when in doubt, help the customer. And yeah, and, and like it, we were talking to before, it, it, it all starts at the top and it filters down. You know, if I'm at the club and, and someone throws up in the bathroom, <laughs> I go clean it up. That way, when I'm not there, it's not a thing. You know what I mean? It's like, no, I'm not above that. I'm not going to make you do that. I'm not going to make you do anything that I won't do. Yeah. Um, but it, it's things like that that set the tone for everybody, you know. Yeah. How often do people throw up at your club? Let's go there. And do you put on a whole hazmat suit? I think in five <laughs> years, maybe, maybe five times. All right. So once a year, it's, you'd yeah, rather have it zero, not but it's not, it's not every weekend. So that's a good thing. No, 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 no. It's not that. No, we don't have that kind of a vibe. Not good. So as, as we wrap up, um, tell people how they can find you, how they could ha- how they could find your great podcast, the business of comedy. Um, if they happen to be in Glendale, Arizona, and they want to come to your club and experience a night where people haven't puked in the bathroom and you get the burgers right. And it's really funny. Um, how can they, how can they find your podcast and your comedy club out there? Uh, well, the podcast is the business of comedy with Tom Sims. It's, everywhere you get podcasts i guess um and stir crazy comedy club in glendale stir crazy comedy club.com awesome awesome well if i make it out to arizona i'm definitely going to stir crazy uh um, great one of, one of my favorite richard Pryor movies by the way back in the day uh <laughs> definitely check out the business of comedy podcast um, even if you're not running a comedy club, I think there are things that you can learn on there. It's a really quality podcast that, that talks about some of the elements that we just talked about. Uh, if you're in Arizona, go to stir crazy, Tom, I can keep talking to you. You're awesome. Thanks, Thank you man. for being on the show. You bet. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate it. <laughs> My pleasure. And thank you for being with us. And here's hoping as always that you're branding the experience at a very high level for all those you serve. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Maybe a facilitator for your next strategic planning or training session? A full program with expert panelists and interactive exercises for attendees? Or maybe you need an MC for your next event? I'm here to help and have the expertise to be a part of an amazing agenda for your audience. Learn more about beta training and consulting at www.btcinc.net Or better yet, just contact me directly at kbader at btcinc.net. And let's talk about your next event, next training session, or next summit.